a bit later. I'm going to stick this puppy on and see how she looks. What I have here is a Chevrolet G506 army truck cab. About 150,000 of these were built between 1940 and 1945. And this one came to England and stayed it. The cab's not in bad condition for a 70 year old. The hinges are, are pretty sharp. They're pretty rusty. They've seen their life. But fortunately the guy I bought it from gave me a set of repo hinges which will be fitted later. So what am I going to do with it? My initial plan was to build a hot rod but as it's going to be built out in the woods that didn't seem like a clever idea. I pondered and thought about chassis. The most obvious choice was Land Rover and the most obvious choice out of Land Rover was Series Land Rover because it has leaf springs and it would retain the old feel that I'm after with this build. I sourced a 109 chassis from a guy in the New Forest. I got it home and put the body on. The portions were good but the axles were way, way, way too narrow. I decided to use Discovery axles which were 6 inches wider which would make the proportions better. I found an unfinished off-road project it has a Rover V8 manual. Both axles, the rear is a Salisbury, a steering box, both prop shafts, a Discovery pedal box and a steering guard, which is handy. Ever since I was young, I always fancied having a tow truck. So I found a Harvey Frost, the iconic British crane for the back of a Land Rover. It's in real good nick and it's all working well. I put the Harvey Frost on, it looked great. Now I have all the parts, I'm going to build me a Land Rover Chevy tow truck in an army styling. The hook. So the first job I've got to do is remove this axle to get the disco axle in. Pretty straightforward, I'm going to try and retain the U-box. And then there we go. So oh, this is my disco axle ready to go in onto the leaf springs. First job on this is to cut out all the existing bracketry. And I'm going to do this by marking my first cuts so I know where I'm going. So Tom's arrived to get this nasty nut off. He's brought his nut gun. Nut gun's here. We've got a very nasty corroded looking bolt. But. Nut gun. Nut gun. Yeah. Beautiful. That rolls it. Max 
it's all set in place and using the existing shackle plate I'm going to make some brackets off of here and do a temporary job so I can wheel it around and do the front back down on the wheels, temporary setup until I get the engine and gearbox in to get the pinion angle just right and now we're going to have a, a move round and do the front. Alright, and that bit. Here's the disco front axle, as you can see it's got quite a bit of bracketry to remove on both sides. It seems quite obvious at this point that the steering is definitely going to foul the leaf springs. The only option is to put the axle under the leaf springs which will bring it up high which I kind of like the idea of because I've got some big wheels to go on it. On the series the tie link runs at the front of the axle. It runs pretty, pretty level with the centre of the axle and the drag link runs from this side. Now, the leaf spring itself sits in here, which gives this adequate room to move left and right. Trouble is, the tie link is 70 mil lower on the Discovery than it is on the Series. So 70 mil will bring you to about here. So I've opted to go with the springs on top of the axle. The steering is still gonna on the drag link is still going to cause some problems but I can probably get over that but it, it leaves the tie rod nice and free at the back here with no problems at all so I'm going to make some brackets for this front nip her up and then just so I can see I'm going to turn this axle upside down and get it up to full height which will Give me an idea. I'm going to weld this drag link up, up to the back of the axle because it's flopping around like a good one and it's driving me insane. Just going to level the axle. It's still a little bit out. I'm going to put a little bit of air in this tire. Got a 
pick up these existing U-bolt mounts down. in the woods. I'm loving the look of it. It looks great. It's up high. I'm pleased with the wheels. They all look good. I wanted to mock it up like this so I could get a very good visualisation of what the end result's going to be. So today I'm going to concentrate on getting all the brackets off that I don't need. And there's a lot of them. Cut off the battery tray bump stop mounts, the engine mounts, these, this. I'm going to cut these down and get it ready. There's a lot of patchwork on the chassis. There's a lot of nasty welding. I've got a lot of work to do. Tom's here to lift on the body. What do you think? I think it was good. Good. Yeah, uh, going up that hole, you've definitely uh, been taking it for the whip, hasn't it? Yeah, it always had to have whip. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 